guys, what's up? Noi here. Um, this video is going to be a tutorial about how to paint in a painterly style, kind of decent and kind of quick. It's similar to smudge painting. I hate that term um, because I think smudge painting is cheating. It's from what I gather, it's like when you take a picture, say like a photograph, mostly a photograph, and you just kind of smudge it in Photoshop and just kind of push it around to make it look like a painting. That is complete garbage. Don't ever do that, guys. It's so annoying to see. But um, this is kind of, well, it's not like that at all. You're using a brush that smudges the colors underneath your own drawing. So it's a legitimate way to paint. Uh, it's very similar to actual, like, real painting, how you would lay down the colors quickly. Like, if you were to oil paint, and then you would just take a, the brush and you would just smudge it all around and blend it all together. It's similar to that. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that or how I at least go about doing it and um, uh, my throat just went all funny um, but yeah let's let's just start now enough talking let's get right into it let's move all this stuff around I have this workstation that I've built that just is very convenient for my workflow it's pretty awesome actually but um, let's just move myself up here like that that's pretty cool right okay so underneath this drawing I mean underneath this drawing underneath um underneath it's not even underneath I have a drawing here that I've started or not that I've started it's actually done I prefer this kind of cell shaded kind of coloring because it's nice and clean um, but my mic is way up here but um, I'll show you in stages what this looks like so you draw the you would do the lines wherever the heck the line art is God, it's all over the place. What am I doing? Oh my god. Alright, so you have a line work that looks like this. Um, I don't like... The thing is, this technique works best when you don't have clean lines. That's the irony of it. But I'm going to try to um, show you with this uh, drawing anyway, because this is what I have. Let's uh, lighten up the lines a bit. So hit Control u And we don't, we don't want a stark black. Anything to kind of soften up this... Um, this line work underneath it helps. Not too much though, you kind of want to keep it dark. Uh, actually, what's that number? 23 and 6. Okay, great. Control U. Three. And what was that? 6. Alright. So we have something that's less stark here, as you can see. And we're just going to start. Um, well, I've already colored it. So after this, what you would do, if you were to start from scratch, is you have the line work, you've already drawn it, you would you'd color it. So you put in the flats, and then you put in the shades, and then the highlights. What I would do after this is I would actually merge it all together, merge select the layer, and I would go in, now I'm using Clip Studio, and this only works with Clip Studio. So if you have Photoshop, this probably won't work. I don't think there's a comparable brush in Photoshop. So quick key is tap. We're gonna use the transparent watercolor. There's transparent and opaque watercolor. We're gonna kind of cycle through the two. They do the same thing. Opaque obviously is a harder, more harsh kind of a blending. Looks, looks like that. And transparent is much softer. I've used a lot of that in the face. So let's go with opaque for now because I kind of really want to muck this up. I want to move through this thing pretty quickly as well. Um, make sure your uh, stabilization, actually, I have it turned on a bit, but I don't like to, to keep it on for this phase. So everything's flattened, and you would paint right over on top of it. You wouldn't create another layer or anything like that. So let's just punch in. I'll show you what I mean. This is pretty cool. And this is the only way I know how to paint, because I'm not a painter. I'm not great at it. And it doesn't even matter what color you have underneath it. I have black right now. I'll show you what black looks like. And I'll show you what white looks like. It doesn't even matter. Because what it's doing is it's taking the color underneath it and it's blending it together. So I'm just going to do this. I actually don't know how this is going to look. I'm not, I'm, like I said, I'm, I haven't, I'm not great at painting. And I haven't done this in a while. I'm just creating this because I need some content on my channel and I figured since I'm on a roll I've done a few videos recently 
you see what I mean it's already kind of looking kind of neat right and you want to keep some of the some of the hard lines in there some of the dark dark colors in there you don't want to go too much like for instance I like some of this um, some of these dark lines in there so if I was to kind of brush over it completely it, it just kind of gets muddy but you could do that if you want in some instances but I would leave some some there like that as you can see so it's all about contrast and variations and stuff like that and I talk about that all the time in my videos and, and this is exactly what I mean actually I wouldn't even start in the hair I would start in the face that's that's tends to be my workflow So this is what I mean, similar to smudge, <laughs> I hate that, I hate that saying, I hate being associated with that. Somebody once commented on my um, piece that I did, I was trying to explain the same technique and they're like, so essentially smudge painting. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not, it's not cheating. There is some DNA between this kind of painting and real life painting. So I wouldn't fuss with it too much right now because I'm so... Um, rusty I'm taking way too much time I would actually just go in and, and start really mucking it up and already you, you start to um, see what I mean now that already looks pretty good but imagine if I would actually taken my time and I imagine I w if I was to um, put in a few hours into this you could kind of see it start to take form now the risk of this type of painting I find is like what I mentioned before you don't want to get rid of all these nice dark lines completely but you want to get rid of most of it because these lines still help define the drawing I switched to a softer, the um, the transparent watercolor because I found that the um, the opaque one was, was very rough on the face, but I'll, I'll go back to it now since I'm doing the hair. I mean, I don't know, you could even, you could probably muck up these lines. Yeah. I know I just said don't do that, but um, maybe for people who are way more experienced, they, they know how to kind of maneuver around that. or. You do muck it up, and then later on you go back in and you draw those hard lines back in. That may be the way to go about doing it too. But I was thinking about this this morning, that's why I decided uh, to do this video, because I was thinking I need to get back into painting. It's not that I'm getting bored with my, my style, actually. Let's see. I actually like doing the cell shaded stuff quite a bit. It's really efficient, and I still like the um, the look of it. I'm still not bored uh, with it, and that's very rare for me because I get bored really, really quickly. I'm that kind of a person where I hate doing the same thing twice. But with the cell shaded style, I'm almost forced to do it because I need to be efficient when I'm um, in the line of work that I do, and. I didn't want to commit to this kind of painterly style because uh, I wouldn't get it. I wouldn't get anything done. I would just um, spend way too much time on a piece, and the turnaround time for for my work is just it's it's not really practical to spend a lot of time on a piece. I don't I don't have a lot of time. I notice the taper on this isn't isn't great. I could probably tweak that. Um, what is this thing now? That's the opacity. I just messed it up. I just messed up the settings. But I, I'm sure I can go in here and click on settings and put more of a taper in, so I can get that those fine fine points. But this isn't too bad anyway. You know what I should have done was um. Actually, you know what? Let me save this as a copy. Seven. 
test because I want to be able to show you guys before and after. So I'll just save this one as a separate name, and then I'll um, I'll open the uh, the old one just to see the difference. So even just brushing over these hard lines, you're creating lighter tones within that line, and it's softening it up. It's it's making it look really pretty. This is just one way of doing it. I mean, I'm probably spending way too much time on it already. I should probably just really go and messy. But I don't know. Maybe this is this is the best way to do it. I don't know. See right there what I was doing? It's, it's too harsh. So just switch back to transparent. And these settings are stock. Like, it's not... I didn't tweak any of it in Clip Studio, so... I hate messing with brushes. I don't like using a lot of brushes. That's why I don't download a lot of them. Um, I don't have a lot of brushes at all. I, I, I usually just stick to um, one, two, three, um, let me see. One, two, three, four. I only stick to four brushes total in this whole program. So the, the, the first two are drawing brushes and the second two are painting brushes. Which is terrible. I don't. I'm not saying that's how you should work. Um, and I and I know I shouldn't be working that way. And I don't. I don't really want to. I want to add at least another couple brushes, like some concept uh, design brushes with some textures and stuff like that. I'm just not good at using them at all. Or maybe I just haven't found the right brushes. So if you guys have any um, suggestions as far as what an awesome brush would be uh, for Clip Studio for concept um, art, please let me know. The brush I'd be looking for is kind of like um, more of a textured kind of a brush just to add character um, to the painting because I tend to think that a lot of my stuff is way too smooth and I just I, I love um, I love textures I know it's a bit contradictory what I just said there I love textures but I don't use textured brushes but I think a lot of it too is um, I just don't have a lot of time to experiment and with the cell shaded style that I that I currently paint with, uh, I don't need a lot of brushes. I don't need texture brushes. All the I just use a lot of um, clean lines and fills, and I think that's why I like it as well. I like um, painting in the cell shaded kind of uh, technique because um, cause I don't have to think really much about what kind of brushes and what kind of feel I'm going with. Um, I just rely heavily on my drawing skill to make the um, art look good. So brush this back in just to smoothen it out. See, I would love to actually go in afterwards and put like a texture brush in there just to give it some character. I just I just don't know of any brushes. And that's a make or break for a lot of artists I find. Um, they really they rely heavily on these um, these cool brushes and it. it really I've seen before before and after pictures of their artwork um, before using a fancy like um, texture brush and after. It's like night and day for, for some of these guys. So maybe I, maybe I should take it more seriously. But then again, it's not the look I'm going for. Like I said before, my style is very reliant on clean lines and solid shapes. So maybe maybe it's just not for, not for me. So I can see right now things are starting to look a bit messy. I'm starting to lose control of, um, of the painting uh, quality. I'm already thinking now I'm gonna have to go back in there with another with a, with another dense uh, a denser brush with uh, to go back in and, and kind of brush that in but but I know that so I'll probably do that at the end just to kind of finish it up yeah the uh, the soft brush isn't working at all for the hair so I'm, I, I have to switch back to the um, a solid brush. 
I mean the um, the opaque watercolor. And it's funny too because this brush is called watercolor brush. And it doesn't act like watercolor at all. It doesn't look anything like watercolor. To me, it looks more like oil painting. It's got that thick kind of um, kind of solid look to it that that oil painting uh, would have. Reminds me a lot of oil paints when I used to when I used to do it in, in college. And this could be a gumbo mess in here. It doesn't really matter. I'll take a lot of the details here out. See the eyes, how soft it looks now? That's pretty cool. Like even the nose as well. Like I'm just gonna brush over it like this. And we're gonna get rid of a lot of these harsh lines. The face is like um, the most difficult part that you're gonna have to watch out for. Cause it's, it's so, even the smallest, even the smallest details added or subtracted from the face it, uh, it can make or break the, the drawing. And right now, of course, I'm moving super fast. I would probably go back in here with a... Um, I'm sorry, I use another brush, actually. I use the, uh, the soft airbrush. So where I would use that is, if I find a part is too punchy in the, in the drawing, I would go in, I'd color pick from, say, a skin tone from the face, and I would go in and lightly brush over it with the airbrush. Something like that, just to kind of dull it down. Maybe not that much, but I would do that. Even the lips, even parts of the face where you're like, you know it's not gonna, where, where, you, where you want it to be more subtle. Stuff like that, it's already looking better. I, should, I probably should have done that with the eyes and the face. Some of the stuff in here was very hard to control. But it's a lot easier when the the line underneath it is lighter. Keep color picking. Um, okay, yeah, let's go back to um, transparent. How am I doing over here? Am I recording? Okay, good, I am. And I, I, I don't think, it's not that this is the most efficient way of painting. I think for me, it's the easiest because I have a hard time seeing tones um, and shades in um, when you involve color with it because that's why a lot of painters back in the old days, they used to do a tonal drawing and then add color on top of it. And a lot of artists now, they do the same thing. They approach it like the masters do they um, they'll do um, like a black and white drawing essentially and then later on they will go and add color on top of it and the reason why is because it's, it's a lot easier to see tone when you just when you just have to deal with black and white a lot of artists can actually don't actually do that they don't need to do that but um, that's uh, I'm kind of jealous uh, that those artists can do that. I can't do that at all. So you can go super painterly with this. It would just take a long time. But um, for me, this is good enough. This is painterly enough. I wouldn't go much more than this because if I did, it would just um, wouldn't be worth my time. Just um, because of uh, it, just wouldn't be worth it for me.
yeah, I'm super rusty. Um, this probably isn't the best uh, best way to do this. Or it is, like this is, I'm kind of learning as I'm going along, but um, this probably is the best way. I'm just not fast at it, I should say. Or maybe I'm just being too careful right now. Maybe I should just punch out like this and just, just start laying down harder colors like this. And that's a texture right there that I really like, like the messiness of it. Before I was, I was just too worried about um, being too clean. Actually, you know what? I shouldn't have merged the highlights. That's that's where I messed up. I shouldn't have merged the highlights. I should have just um, brushed the highlights in at the end. I'm gonna reintroduce some harder colors in here because I don't like the, how soft that's looking. And that's the advantage of like really pulling the um, the drawing back by that I mean making it like smaller just so you kind of get an overall look of it when you're punched in this close it may look beautiful like everything's blending nicely but then when you punch back out you may notice that it looks a bit weird so it's, it's almost kind of better kind of like um, my approach to drawing to really start out small like uh, pull out far away from the canvas itself so you get a a general look of how the um, drawing should look and then you punch in and you start detailing so that's a good tip to kind of um, a good habit to kind of get into see I screwed myself over by merging the highlights and I have to deal with this kind of crap but I'm just gonna kind of maybe brush around it and not focus too much on it So yes, highlights later, guys. That's uh, very important. I'm running into some issues right now with it. I love Clip Studio. Um, I think it's one of these programs that still don't require a subscription. You can still purchase it a la carte and it's yours forever which is awesome. I don't know how much longer it's gonna be like that for. I hope it stays like that forever. Uh, I, just, I just love this program, but I think my membership is gonna last forever. Uh, that's how usually these things work. After a while, even if it goes to subscription-based, um, the people who bought it before kind of get grandfathered into this, uh, this, this permanent membership kind of thing. The only negative side is that you won't you're not eligible for the latest version and um, or any of the upgrades that come along with it which is fine I mean I'm completely happy with this version so I'm, I'm completely fine with just sticking to this forever it's um it's very good to my workflow works really well so as you can see that's pretty messy there because I had to kind of mess around with the um, or kind of fishtail around the uh, the highlights so it doesn't look as accurate but it's not bad because what I would do later on is I would just go back in there and just brush it brush in the um, the details just sharpening up these edges here like this and by merging this highlight it actually probably added actually probably added um, that's I can't speak probably added another few hours to the uh, overall drawing to be honest so so one small mistake can set you back a few hours it's terrible so yeah I would go in and like start adding start brushing in some of the lines back in because I kind of muddied them up <clears throat>
25 minutes, holy smokes. Alright, but you get the point. For these harsh lines, I would actually go back in and brush in. I'm just going to use a darker pencil. looking pretty rough right now but then you just go back in with a brush and you just clean it up that's when you start doing the um, you, you get in and you start detailing so the the, the key is I want to get rid of all these um, these really hard lines that I put down and that's what I mean this was a nightmare to begin with because I um, the drawing underneath was very clean and crisp and that's very hard to kind of undo so I, I've, I've done this painting before with a lot of uh, success actually but the underdrawing was was like um, wasn't a pen wasn't done with an inking pen it was done with a more subtle regular pencil so it looked a lot softer and I didn't have to go in and, and correct lines like this like this ear for it, for instance, see this dark line around it? I would just go ahead and like probably erase it just to make it not look as prominent. Even the hair, just to avoid having to worry about it. Then I would go in with the brush. And just soften it. I mean, this is a, um, has been a terrible tutorial. <laughs> I don't know if I want to post it, but I recorded it anyway. If I decide to uh, post it, then I'm, then I will. We're all learning here. I'm learning. You're learning. We'll, we'll, we'll learn this together. We'll, we'll get this right. But that's that's it. That's just the um, that's that's the gist of it. As you can see, see, I'm just bothered by all these hard lines. You just gotta soften them up. Soften them, but not too much. You still want to keep a hard edge with some of this stuff. I can't believe I've been drawing for half an hour. Well, 28 minutes. This time goes by so fast. That's why I'm skeptical when I see amazing artwork um, and then you see next to it, next to the description they put, they're like, this took me an hour. And it's, it's, I don't know, maybe, I'm not calling them liars, but like, like, ah, it's, it's kind of hard to paint that in an hour. Maybe it felt like an hour, but probably wasn't. Like, for instance, this demo that I just did, did not feel like half an hour, it felt more like 10 minutes. And if you were to ask me, and if, and if I wasn't recording it, how long this took me, I would have probably said 10 minutes. Just being honest with you guys. So yeah, I would uh, go in with highlights, uh, final airbrush, like this. I would grab maybe a red or a blue, and I would go like this. See how that just kind of adds a glow to it? Maybe uh, on a separate layer instead, actually, instead of doing it right above it, I would click another layer. I would go like this. And I would maybe do like um, an overlay. See how it punches it out? Even under here. See how messy it is underneath that neck? I even like that because it, it adds texture. It's not as smooth as all this garbage up here. I like this shadow up here to how it transitions from dark to really light over here. And it's very subtle and smooth. I like that as well, but 
but that's what I would do. I would go in and add those colors. I would go in also and brush in, um, let's make another layer. I would go do this and I would go in, um, would I do? yeah, let's use darker pencil. This is where I really need the textured brushes like I was talking about. Let's do this. Actually, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, I would just go in and add the details. Whoa. Pick from this, grab a lighter color. Maybe even lighter than that. I wouldn't use complete white because that's b really boring. So I would just do this, just punch up everything. See if I had um, a textured like speckle brush or whatever you'd call it, I'd probably just do that. I'd, I'd go over it like, maybe I do actually. I'd go over the skin just to kind of give it a glistening um, kind of color. But see how these are harsh, these lights, these light hits, I should say? I would go in again, probably something like this, with the transparent watercolor. Smooth them out. Not all of it, not too much. Because some reflections are harsh, they have harsh um, corners. Maybe just do one side like that and keep that a bit harder. I notice the way I talk, it sounds like I'm always asking a question. Because I always like, that's my, um, what do you call that, inflection. Uh, I usually raise my, um, my, my pitch at the end, like, like this. I don't know why I do this, but I'll try to correct it. I, I don't like sounding like that. Okay, that's just terrible. Now, it's just bad because I didn't put a lot of time into it, to be honest. That's probably why. If I, if I put more time into it, of course, it would look better. And these things take time, so don't um, don't speed through it. If you care about it, don't don't speed through it. What? Where is this thing? There we go. There. So we have something that looks like this. There's copy. it did so there we have it very cell shaded -y kind of a look to the right and over to the left a slightly more painterly style but not as painterly as I'd like it to be and I think that has to do with just like I said before just a little bit more work into it um, let's go a little bit more work into it. If I had a texture brush, I would go in and you know, and then just blend it. Or maybe just not worry so much about being perfect. All the little mistakes, not mistakes, but all the little textures inside that add to it. There you go. And of course this is a relatively boring 
drawing it doesn't have a, a strong lighting a strong lighting it doesn't have strong lighting oh I also use the uh, the lasso tool quite a bit so if there was like um, a light streak that went across their face like this you could do that as well I would do that on a separate layer um, use the airbrush this and then I would put like um, an overlay or something like that on top of it and maybe drop down the opacity or maybe not maybe that is the look there's a lot you can do but as you can see there's a difference I don't know if you can see that right I'm gonna punch in a bit more how about that there you go there's a difference the one on the left more painterly the one on the right less painterly I made some mistakes with the high, merging the highlights and stuff like that but you get the point you just keep going you, 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 you kind of move slowly you, you want to keep some of the hard lines in there you want to kind of delete some of it um, but yeah that's it cool I think that's the video for today I'm gonna to try my hardest to keep up with these things and um, learn at the same time because I'm, I'm trying to figure this stuff out myself as I'm going along I can look at this forever, but I won't. Let's move this out of the way. Thanks for watching, guys. I, um, I, my mouse is like on the other monitor. I have three monitors going on at once here. Get a bit confusing at times. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you love the video, give it a follow. That'd be amazing, and I really appreciate it, guys. So until next time, I'll see you guys. Bye-bye.